uh, your microphone will be muted uh, to speak uh, on Zoom. You will need to request to speak on chat at Zoom and upon receiving acknowledgement, your microphone will be unmuted. To be a speaker, both at, uh, in presence and on Zoom, you must be a resident of East Hempfield Township or a property owner in East Hempfield Township. And your comments are asked to be limited to three minutes or less about the item that's being discussed on the agenda or for non-agenda items at the end for the public comment session. This meeting has been advertised to be held both on Zoom and in person and Robert's rules will apply for tonight's meeting. We also ask that only one person speak at a time to make the meeting visible for every, or hearable for everybody on Zoom. We will also be handling all votes by roll call vote handled by the township manager. With that, we will move on to our first agenda item. Please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge. Now the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Also, I failed to mention that with the Zoom meeting, these meetings are also being recorded. And so with that, we will now move on to our first item. We are conducting a actual hearing it is a conditional hearing for 2260 Dairy Road. It's for an electronic billboard. And as for all conditional use hearings, I will turn it over to the township solicitor who will guide the proceedings. It should be on, just a matter of speaking into it. Can you hear me? I can if you go closer. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is a, a hearing. We do have a court reporter who is present tonight. Um, she's going to be taking down all of the testimony. Consequently, it's important that only one person speak at a time. Uh, when we begin the hearing, we will have the applicant uh, present their evidence in the form of testimony or exhibits or both. Um, when they have completed their testimony, they will be subject to questions from the members of the board, um, from anyone who is present who is interested in the application. Uh, prior to making a statement for or against the application, though, we will ask that anyone uh, who is going to make a statement or give testimony be sworn or affirmed prior to making their statement. Um, also, if anyone is participating in the hearing on Zoom, we will ask you to turn on your camera before making your statement because this is a formal hearing. Um, after the applicant has presented their evidence, uh, if anyone wishes to become a party in the case and present testimony in the form of exhibits, uh, or present evidence, I'm sorry, in the form of exhibits or testimony, they may do so, um, but they will need to be first recognized as a party to the case. Um, when the hearing is closed, uh, the board will have 45 days to render its decision. All right, so that's our process for tonight. Thank you. So I guess we'll start as our- Mr. Mr. Like Mr. Chairman, yes. if I may. Yes, Mr. Becker. Um, due to the fact that we just received new information from the applicant uh, yesterday. Staff has not had a chance to um, adequately review the new information or uh, provide conditions for the board or the applicant. So staff is requesting that um, at the um, end of the testimony that the board consider taking the additional time to render a decision at a later meeting, whether that be the December 2nd or December 16th meeting to give staff time to work with the applicant on any conditions if the board so chooses to approve the conditional use. Thank you, Mr. Brett. Good evening, I'm Claudia Shank from McNeese Wells and Nurick on behalf of the applicant. Uh, before we get started, I'm just gonna pass out some exhibits. Good idea. <laughs> On a limbo under it, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, great. Thanks. <clears throat> Susan, do you have the handouts? All right, so the application that uh, we're here presenting this evening has been submitted on behalf of Oak Tree Outdoor Advertising LP. And here with me tonight is the president of Oak Tree, uh, Devin Wagner, who will be providing testimony in support of the application. So I just wanna start out briefly um, by going over uh, just the general background here in this matter. So we're proposing the construction of a two-sided digital billboard at 2260 Dairy Road. That property is located in your enterprise zoning district. It's roughly a 10 acre tract. It's south of Dairy Road and Route 283. I think he's checking that now. Okay. <laughs> and if you look at the, the 11 by 17 sheets, you'll see that the first sheet there is an overall plan sheet. And I'll get it on the screen as soon as I'm able to here as well. You're likely familiar with the property because the board recently considered and approved. There we go on the screen. Um, a land development plan for this site. In terms of, it's gone again, John. Here we go. So in terms of the overall chronology, we actually originally submitted a conditional use application in August of this year for this, this proposal. And that was reviewed by the township engineer. We received his review letter on October 1st. So as a result of that review and in some discussions with township staff, um, we determined that we would continue the conditional use hearing. We were twice before you for continuances. And really that was as a result of some of the comments that were raised in that review letter, which really lended, pointed out to us the need to marry the proposal with respect to the billboard with the land development plan that the board had approved and to make sure that those fit together in a way that, that made sense. So that is the reason for the delay. Um, as John indicated in the beginning, some of these materials were just submitted early this week. So it is, is true that staff has not had a chance to fully review them yet. And we would certainly be in agreement with uh, waiting to make a decision until staff had an opportunity to do that or alternatively making the decision uh, subject to a condition that, that we would need to satisfy all staff and engineering comments. Uh, in terms of the zoning approval that's required, uh, a conditional use is required for a billboard to be constructed in the enterprise uh, district which is why we're here before you this evening. One other item I do wanna point out before I have Devin come up to testify is that there was previously a billboard on this property. It was located close to the property's Eastern uh, border there. It was removed roughly six months ago. That was a, a two-faced billboard. I believe it was uh, non-conforming as to setbacks, um, but that has been removed at this time. I think in contemplation of the land development and, and also in contemplation of this application. Uh, another point I'll make before Devin comes forward is that we have uh, obtained a, a lease from the landowner that would allow us to construct the billboard in the location that is shown on the plan before you. And that is what has been marked as petitioner's exhibit one. So with that, I will ask Devin to come up. Okay, can you please state your name for the record? How long have you been with Oak Tree, Devin? And fair to say that you maintain a number of billboards throughout Lancaster County. Pardon me, Claudia and Devin. Devin, you have to get that mic pretty close to your mouth in order for it to uh, transmit. Or you can take it off. That might be better than trying oh, it to might not punch be over the whole time. There we go. Maybe swap it with uh, Susan's. <laughs> All right. So can you just briefly explain the, the process for selecting this site, why you feel that this is a desirable site for an uh, electronic billboard? Yes, we decided that for this location based on the continuing development throughout the region, 283 obvious be, obviously being a main artery uh, of traveling traffic uh, from all points um, west and uh, feel that it's uh, very viable and desirable to a lot of local as well as regional and national advertisers. And so this would be a, a digital billboard with LED lighting, is that correct? That is correct. 
So I'm just going to walk you briefly through some of the criteria in the zoning ordinance uh, for conditional use approval of a billboard. Uh, one of the criteria is that the billboard cannot be within 1,000 feet of another billboard. Is that something that you looked at as part of uh, selecting this location? We have, and as noted on the site plan, you'll see that there is a billboard to the west, but we're outside of 1,000 feet from the, that location. So the light blue circle on the site plan with the 1,000 foot radius, that would depict the billboard that is to the west of the property. Correct. And there's a second light blue circle on that plan uh, with a 500 foot radius. What does that depict? So um, there are local ordinances as well as PennDOT ordinances. The blue circle on the right hand side is indicating that we're 500 feet from the on ramp that comes on the 283 from Rorstown Road. And that's a separate PennDOT requirement? Correct. In terms of uh, billboards that would be located to the east at the property, is there any billboard within a thousand feet? There's not a billboard within a thousand feet. Next closest billboard is on Rorstown Road, north of 283. And suffice it to say, uh, looking at the site plan that the billboard is set back significantly more than 50 feet from the side and rear property lines, is that correct? That is correct. How far is it set back from the street right away, the front uh, property line? The, I believe um, per the ordinance is a 35 foot setback. In terms of adjacent zoning districts, is, is the property uh, adjacent to any residentially zoned land or within, would the billboard be within 1,000 feet of residentially zoned property? Not as indicated on the zoning map. In terms of placement of the billboard, how do you ensure that the board will not obstruct the view of motorists? Um, the placement of the board falls within, um, obviously on the property, it is, uh, and if you're going eastbound, it is right-hand reading board, westbound left-hand reading board. And um, billboards uh, uh, traditionally and the three studies have shown that they do not um, distract drivers and there's no uh, increased indication of any type of uh, traffic uh, accidents because of uh, billboards and digital billboards specifically. If you could turn to what I have marked as exhibit two, it's the second 11 by 17 sheet. And I apologize, I don't have that to display on the screen. And that provides, can you explain what that document is, please? So this is um, uh, architectural. Diane, uh, it's the last page. <clears throat> I do have it in there. Oh, oh no, that's something nope, different. I'm on. sorry. Yep, that was in the application. My bad. There we go. What is included as exhibit um, two is the sketch of the steel billboard structure. Uh, it indicates that it's uh, a steel structure that stands 25 feet tall. Um, the billboard faces are 10 feet by 30 feet, one on each side of the unit. It is a V panel um, with uh, approximately a 28% um, V. Um, uh, the back side of the board is, is 15, 15 feet separated apart, and I think on the front it is uh, three feet. And it meets all uh, conditions as far as construction. I believe it's um, 125 uh, mile an hour wind load uh, that meets the standards for steel structures, um, billboard structures uh, in this area. So each uh, face of the billboard is 300 square feet, is that correct? Correct. And the, the angle between the two billboard faces would be less than 30 degrees. Correct. As we discussed, this is obviously not a conversion of a billboard, an existing billboard. The existing billboard in the property has been removed, correct? Correct. So I assume the property owner will be responsible for maintaining the property. Can you explain how you will handle the maintenance of the billboard? Um, the maintenance of the billboard, actually, uh, per the lease, we're responsible for um, maintaining the billboard, provide the electric to the, to the location, and uh, keeping it visually uh, in good condition, as well as uh, um, maintaining the digital faces that would be attached to each side of the billboard. Did you have a light study conducted for the proposed billboard? Uh, we have. Okay, and I'm going to draw your attention to the, the packet I handed out, what I've marked as Petitioner's Exhibit 3. Is that a copy of that study? Uh, yes, it is. Could you just start out broad brush strokes by explaining how LED billboards work in terms of the ambient light they produce? Sure. Um, basically, uh, digital billboards have kind of really um, 
have seen increased deployment throughout the region as well as the country in the past 15 to 20 years. They've continued to advance. Um, the manufacturer of the units that we have uh, in this market are Watchfire. They're one of the top two manufacturers in the nation that um, design and build digital billboards. Um, the light studies show with LED lighting, it's very directional lighting. And as uh, indicated with inside the study, they do not produce more than 0.3 foot candles um, at any level. And then if you go to the second page of the study, you can actually see uh, the foot candles based on viewing distances going out from 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 feet. The transition from one advertiser to another advertiser is what's called a non-animated transition. So there's no flashing, um, oscillating, um, flickering. Uh, it's a non-animated tra transition that doesn't um, uh, affect anything as far as uh, people's eyes and uh, casting too broad of a shadow onto uh, notice. And can you just briefly provide the conclusion, and I know you talked about it in some detail, but the conclusion that Watchfire reached uh, in conducting this study? Um, well, the conclusion is that it would not negatively affect or um, produce any uh, light above, um, actually less than, but uh, 0.3 uh, candle lights on um, other properties that are abutting this location on uh, 2260 Gary Road. And um, additionally, um, the one of the other things that are included on the boards is the light adjustment is based off of photocells and really dictates the changing in the brightness of the board based off of uh, ambient light around the structure. So you already indicated that there would not be any animated messages on the billboard. I assume there would not be any audio messages that would be part of the billboard. And no special effects like shading, dissolving, or, or any movement in any of the images. Correct. I believe that's all that I have for Devin. I do have some uh, remarks to make in conclusion, but uh, if the board has questions for Devin, I think now would be the, the time for that. I, I've, got, I've got a couple of questions. Um, uh, did you own the billboard that was where there originally? We did not. You that did was not. Um, owned while well, it was a, a lease that was through Lamar Advertising. So you weren't involved in that at all? I was not involved in that at all. Okay. Um, I note in some of the paperwork that um, the township felt that it wasn't a floodplain. It, you say it's not in a floodplain, John. Can you refresh me on that? The original, the original location, um, they have actually moved it now. Um, I don't know if you went over that, Claudia. I didn't. The original location was along the, the uh, eastern property line. So I believe it would have been closer to the floodplain in that location than it is currently. So we've moved it. So it's, it's clearly out of the floodplain. It's, um, Tom, it's um, west of the parking lot in front of the proposed warehouse. If you look up on the screen. Oh, it's, further, it's further west. Yes. Yeah, I, I apologize. It is a little hard to see on the plan, but John has done a really nice <laughs> job on the screen of highlighting exactly where it is. It's right located to the west of the parking lot there in that red square if you're looking on the screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If I'm not mistaken, the way it's shown, it's actually the V is inverted in the wrong way. The V point should go toward 283, or am I looking at this? No, I'm not looking at it upside down. Um, I can just barely see the red, what I believe is to be the sign, and it's to be viewed correctly from east and west travel, it would want to be with the apex pointing north. You are, you are correct, the V would be pointing towards uh, 283. Um, in the pictures that are presented, there's a billboard. Is that an existing or is that for illustration? That was the one that uh, was referenced that has since been removed on oh. the eastern portion of the property. Okay. Okay. And no animated images, but what is your time slot per image as it changes? So I can, I can speak to that briefly. And 
we understand that the zoning ordinance requires only one change per hour. Okay. So we understand that that's the criteria. We would appreciate if the board would grant the approval that they would grant the flexibility for us to seek a variance from the zoning hearing board would we choose to do that with respect to that timing. Um, I think as, as the board knows, that's not the industry standard, certainly in terms of the, the frequency of changing of digital billboards, but we understand that that is the criteria in your ordinance. So we would have to get a, a variance from the zoning hearing board if we wanted to change that. What would your goal be in that variance? The industry standard, or actually the PennDOT um, requirements and regulations are five seconds. As a company, um, we are pretty consistent between eight and 10 seconds as far as the static time. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else for the board? Just, just maybe one more. It's also uh, my understanding that you're, you may be looking for a variance on the height of the sign at some point by yep. the zoning hearing board also, correct? That, that's correct. And that sort of leads me into the, the two remarks that I wanted to okay. make in closing. So you hit on both of them. Okay. Um, the bill, your ordinance allows the billboard to be 25 feet in height. We understand obviously that is the requirement. Based on some of the plannings and the trees that are proposed on the property, there's a bit of a concern from our perspective as to whether the billboard will be visible once those trees grow to maturity. So similar to the, the timing of the display, what we would ask would be that the board would condition the approval or would include as a condition of the approval that the, the board can be 25 feet in height or such height as the zoning hearing board would approve. So for any change to the frequency of the messages, for any change to the height, we would need to go to the zoning hearing for, board for approval with respect to that. And we would just ask that the decision not prevent us from doing that um, we would make a decision at a later time, uh, you know, based on further review, whether or not that would ultimately be necessary or desirable. What is your uh, timing, considering that we are looking at doing an update to our sign ordinance? Speak to timing for construction. Um, typically, when if we uh, receive permits, um, once we receive local permits, we have to then proceed to PennDOT, which can take anywhere from seven to um, two weeks. And typically once it, it, that is the case, we receive all those in hand, we typically build within eight to 12 weeks from that time frame. So you're saying about 12, 12 weeks out? Eight, 12 weeks would be um, the max. Not sure we can turn around ordinance that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, so, excuse me. I'm not sure we can turn an ordinance update around that quickly. That would be very impressive. The only other comment that I will make, and again, going back to what I mentioned in the beginning and what John had, had indicated, you know, if the board looks favorably upon this application this evening, you, you know, we would certainly be um, agreeable to a condition that, that it would be subject to, to staff and engineer comments and their review as well. Um, we understand that that would need to be completed before we would be able to proceed. You answered my only other question because I was looking at from Street View with 283 and you definitely have obstructed uh, Street View with the trees there when you're going uh, westbound to eastbound. From westbound to eastbound. West Cor east. Correct, yes, uh, within the PennDOT right away. That wasn't a problem with when it used to be at the corner. Correct. Any other questions of the board? Do you have any more uh, witnesses that you want to present? I do not. Um, the only other item that I would have before you close the hearing is just to move for the admission of the exhibits into the record. I, I can't hear you. you I'm sorry. Want, to move want. the admission of the exhibits into the record. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to turn it back over to our council solicitor. Okay. So I, I don't see any issue with accepting. Uh, Susan, today. if I if I may, um, Claudia, I had sent you uh, an email. A, um, a property owner near the proposed site had commented that the previous billboard had caused glare issues, especially for vehicles that were higher up like tractor trailers or um, trucks with either a lifted suspension or something like that. Mm -hmm. have, you, uh, have you guys looked at the glare uh, for the proposed billboard? Yes, I did provide that email to Devin and I think he can speak to that directly. And, and I think the light study kind of addresses um, the idea of with LED boards, they actually throw off uh, 
a lot less light or um, reflection than a traditional static board that have either up lighting or down lighting that are the old goosenecks. Again, the, the lighting is LED, so it's very directional. It's directed at the road of, of where the visibility is. And um, it is not, again, not flashing, not animating with any types of transition. Um, so I, I, it wouldn't be like there would be glare how um, up lighting or down lighting on a vinyl case that it traditionally would be. So at this time, I would open it. I would suggest you open it up to the public, see if there's any yeah. comments. If there's anybody here from the public that wishes to speak. Anybody on Zoom? Don't believe so. Yeah, sounds like crickets right now. So just to be clear, we will accept these exhibits into um, into evidence. And at this point, then we should close the hearing. So are we? Uh, so we're going to have a motion here, and is it's the motion to close or continue? Well, I think the board should discuss that. Do you want to leave this open um, to allow staff to talk about conditions and come back with? Mm -hmm presentation at your next meeting and at that point you could close the hearing and then All right, so if, if it sounds like more with staff not having a chance to review it that we're looking to continue here and not close it that would be fair okay. any uh, any concerns on the applicant side with uh going to our next meeting in december no yeah, that's fine all right what's the will of the board if we decide to continue it the motion would be pretty simple motion to continue the hearing to our next meeting so moved Okay, I got a motion from Mr. Ben. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Lefevre. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So I have a five nothing. Thank you very much. Claudia, could you send me these exhibits then? All right, thank you. Okay, so our next item, following our new protocol of uh, acknowledging anything that was a late add to the agenda, we have a request to add to the agenda, Lime Spring Village the Dias Operation and Meetings Agreement. Um, Mr. Beck, you wanna explain that, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through the course of the review of the stormwater management facilities, um, DMA had recommended since uh, facilities are being added to the St. Louis property, specifically amended soils uh, to address stormwater runoff on that property. Um, DMA recommended that an, a separate O and M agreement be executed between the St. Louis property owner and the township. Uh, in keeping with uh, DMA's recommendation, um, uh, Ms. Shank uh, actually forwarded the uh, agreement to Susan, Cindy and I yesterday. Susan has reviewed it. She provided her uh, her review via email. She has no uh, objections, no uh, corrections, additions, or revisions to the agreement. So as it stands now, um, staff would recommend that the board approve the agreement as presented. So right now it's a motion just to add it to the agenda. So I will entertain a motion to add the Lime Springs Village Dios DSE uh, operation and maintenance agreement to the agenda. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Ben. Is there a second? Second. Second from Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five to nothing. Okay, next up we have is the consent agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to approve routine items that usually require very little debate or discussion. And with that, I will open up the consent agenda to the board. Is there anything, anything on comment on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Lefevre, is there a second? Second. Okay, a second from Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So I have it five to nothing. Next, we'll move on to action items. And the first action item is development services. The first one is, is what we just heard earlier tonight, 2260 Dairy Road decision on the conditional use hearing. I'll entertain a motion to table. 
Should we just continue? Well, that? we continue, but we're tabling this specific motion that's on the agenda right now. So entertain a motion to table. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Ben is there a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Mr. Switzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it. Five nothing. Next up, we're back on to the Lime Springs Village O&M agreement. Um, is there any discussion of the board? Could I just, John, could you just explain this a little bit to me? It, um, this agreement between the diocese and the developer or the diocese and the township? Why is it a between the township and the diocese? Um, thank you, Mr. Bennett. Um, I'd be happy to clarify. As with any stormwater facility going onto a property, the stormwater ordinance requires an agreement executed between the township and the property owner to ensure that facility is maintained. Since the facility is going onto the St. Louis property, the diocese as the owner of the property would be the entity executing the agreement with the township. The developer will be installing those facilities, but it will be the requirement of the property owner to maintain those facilities. Hence, the reason for the agreement to ensure the property owner maintains those amended soils, stormwater facilities. And the uh, diocese has accepted, uh, they've agreed to this. I would have to defer to Ms. Shank. Yes, the diocese has agreed to it. Assume there's some deal involved with. Well, this is part of a larger project right. because we okay. had to send sewer from their property and so forth. So. Okay, all right, sounds good. But it's they're not being coerced into this. No, certainly not. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, there discussion on the board. Anything from the audience? Okay, seeing none. I entertain a motion to approve the diocese. Stormwater Management and Operations Maintenance Agreement subject to final review and approval of the township staff, engineer, and solicitor. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Lefevre. Is there a second? Second from the chair. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Next up, we have the Stauffer Property Subdivision Final Plan at 3047 Marriott Avenue. Approval of the first request to extend the final plan recording deadline to March 1st, 2021. I believe you're on the consent okay. agenda, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say, what agenda were you on? <laughs> yeah, oh, that was actually, we did talk about that at our last meeting too. Yes. Okay, so now employee 2021 holiday schedule, Ms. Slicer. This is the uh, schedule that you approve every year. There are no changes. There are nine holidays listed. Uh, 2021 is a little odd. There's technically 10 holidays listed because the 1st of January, 2022 is a holiday. So, or is a Saturday? That's what the problem is. So we are acknowledging that December 31st of 2021 is the actual holiday for the employees. And will we not have a reorganization meeting on the third? First Monday? Yes. Yes. Okay. I would move to approval of the employee um, holiday policy for 2021 as prepared. I have a motion for Mr. Lefevre. Is there a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Schweitzer, pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Thank you. Next up, uh, some not as good news resignations and retirements. We have uh, a retirement of John Riska, retirement on 11 27 2020 from Public Works after 31 years of service. And we're going to take these at one at a time. So the first one up is for the resignation. And I'll read the motion. The motion is to accept with regrets the retirement notice from John Risco after 31 years of exemplary service with an effective date of November 27, 2020. As I worked with John Risco prior to his 31 years at East Hempfield Township, I would like to make a motion to accept his uh, retirement. November the 27th, 2020, and appreciation for his years of service. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Lefebvre. Is there a second? 
Second. Okay, we have a second from Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Lefever. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. The ayes have a five nothing. Um, before we go on to the next one, we have a bunch of employees that we need to recognize the last couple months with COVID and everything else that was occurring. Is there any plans? Working on it. Okay. We kind of lost our banquet space. <laughs> so we have to negotiate that. Yes. Uh, it's just something, something to think about because uh, this is not the only retirement we've had for the last couple of months. And we've not had really a chance to do what we've done with employees Correct. and give them a good send off. So it'd be, if we can do figure out some creative way as we get more restrictive now again. Yeah, that's true uh, too. It would be uh, nice to do something uh, and not maybe do it on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so if, it, if, it, if it means, uh, I don't know if we have access. Football field? To something that's bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we'll just whatever on. creative thoughts we can put into it probably be a good idea. Next up is a, a resignation of James Hackett. Uh, Mr. Hackett has served on the Planning Commission, uh, it looks like since July of 2013, so almost eight years of service with uh, the township. Um, so I will entertain a motion to accept with regrets the resignation of James Hackett after seven exemplary years of service on the Planning Commission effective immediately. So moved. A motion from Mr. Weaver. Is there a second? Second. Second from Mr. Bennett. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it. Five nothing. Uh, please uh, send him our thanks and appreciation there. Sure. Question. Do we do, I know, have an alternate available? Will the Planning Commission make a decision on that alternate? In keeping with tradition, uh, we will be taking this to the December Planning Commission meeting and we'll be looking for a recommendation from the Planning Commission for uh, the person to fill Mr. Hackett's uh, remaining term. And we have two alternates or three? We have three. Three. So that would, in um, <clears throat> timing wise, it would correspond perfectly with the beginning of the year appointments uh, come the reorg meeting in January. Would there be thought of needing continue with three alternates or? I believe so, but um, I'll leave that up to the planning commission. Um, it'll be discussed and I, I would, I would, uh, I would venture to, to guess that the planning commission would say, would agree that three alternates are needed, um, especially with what we're dealing with right now with the spike in COVID and uh, who knows where we're going with that. But uh, I, I would, I would imagine it would be um, a motion to fill Mr. Hackett's position and then um, the board would open up um, opportunities for anybody that is willing to serve on the planning commission. We'll look for their recommendation. Glad we uh, started doing alternates a couple of years ago. It's come in handy over the last year. Absolutely. Um, that is it for action items. Um, we will now move on to old business. Uh, we do have 2021 budget in continued discussion and we will be looking to adopt on December 2nd, 2020. Um, I don't know if anybody has any things they would like to talk about related to the budget at this point. No, I really none. I will uh, state that I will be uh, throwing my chairman prerogative a little bit on the December 2nd meeting. We did take myself and Mr. Bennett took a look at the last 10 years of the revenue and expenses and there is some good news to report there. And in a few minutes when we do the board report up, we'll talk about the, uh, the pension meeting that we had today too, which is some more good news related to the budget. So uh, moving on to new business, we have nothing on the agenda. Is there anything to be added for new business? Uh, I actually had an old business item I would like to question. Um, the little Conestoga stormwater project. Um, at last meeting, we had, I had requested that when planning, I guess, and or finance might review this, that they would make recommendation to the board considering the potential expense. And I don't know if anything has moved in that direction I have had unsolicited feedback, people 
over people read in minutes that I had raised some concern about this, and so they've approached me with alleging that there's residences that do not feel they can at this time, or maybe for other reasons, they don't feel they can support it as residences. So um, just want to keep this alive with us that we do the right thing. When are the uh, board reports come out in a moment, there's going to be a request for a planning meeting. Um, and one of the reasons we're going to be requesting a planning meeting is Manon Township has pulled out. Hmm. Interesting. So more to follow. Thank you. Okay. Uh, seeing nothing for new business, we'll turn over a traffic commission report, Mr. Lefevre. We had a um, very good meeting this evening. Um, we uh, analyzed the Shank Road um, bridge matter without uh, our traffic engineer consultant on board or the resident with concern, Mr. Longenecker. So we basically tabled that for our next meeting in a month. Um, Nisley Road, uh, we still are um, waiting and, and pending more action on that. There's a area in the Barcrest area, Hedgewick Drive and Hidden Lane, which should be streets in East Hempfield that are familiar to the board. Um, some concern there about traffic and alleged or observed to be speeding, but concern about some students and things. And it was agreed that we will add 225 mile per hour speed limit signs and conditioning our thinking that with COVID and schools being uh, uh, online, the students may not be congregating out as much. So we'd watch if we've gotten results from the speed signs in a positive mode. We had a, I will call it passionate request from a resident on Sharon Drive about the cut through traffic there and that is not a new matter before the township either with thoughts about <clears throat> placing uh, speed bumps uh, to help to slow that traffic and whether that would be productive and um, there was some consideration of speed bumps the temporary type as we had used initially the rubber kind being employed for maybe uh, nine months of the year. But in the winter seasons when there's plowing and when there would not be children playing in streets maybe as much or people mowing lawns or other concern with people out and about that they could be removed. Just one, one thought in that direction. And uh, it was determined that there was a petition of residents there done possibly three years ago and Mrs. Schweitzer is going to see if that's not able to be located in the file and be updated. Possibly there have been some parties that moved and maybe it should be uh, redone, but that there would be an expression by the residents there that would encourage us to try to help something here. And of course, if we, we acknowledged again that whenever we restrict something on one road, we put it on another road. So. That's just a difficult subject we will need to deal with. And we had no public comments. So that was the meeting. Moving on, we will move on to development services project update. Mr. Beck, if you have anything you want to update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first one is Lidl had their grand opening today. I believe some of the supervisors were able to attend. Um, Lime Spring one, good, one day a good German impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job. I introduced us as Uberstatten Meisters. <laughs> uh, um, Lime Spring Villages, uh, with the approval of the diocese O&M agreement, that was the last piece that uh, was needed in order for them to move forward with the uh, recording the plan. Right now. Um, Susan is uh, performing uh, the final reviews on the revised um, developers agreements and O&M agreement for the Lime Spring Village property. 
Scott Hain uh, was able to finalize his financial security um, review and recommendation. So at this point, once um, everything's good with the agreements, we anticipate uh, receiving those for board signature along with the plans and they can move forward with getting those recorded. Uh, Penn State Health Medical Center and uh, Brookside. The developer is closing in on um, the improvements to State Road and realignment uh, for the 12th, uh, the December 2nd board meeting. Uh, they are moving forward. We just received today um, the um, deeds of dedication uh, for the township to uh, vacate the right of way for State Road and Old State Road, which is the first step to um, officially um, memorialize the um, vacating of that right of way. Um, subsequently, um, we will be receiving a new deed of dedication for the right of way of the new State Road after the realignment which should be coming before the board at the December 16th meeting. Um, staff has talked to the developer and has concerns about the board and township accepting dedication of the road without it being ready to be open because at that point in time, um, they're probably a couple of weeks away from it being open. So we, we have worked with um, the developer and um, worked out a, an agreement that if the board accepts, would be willing to accept dedication of the right of way pending the final recording of the deed of dedication once that road is ready to be open, which would signify that the right of way would be back to the township when the road is open and being used by public traffic. Mr. Beck, when are they looking to open the road? They haven't given a firm date but I believe it's in January, early February. Seven ninety one Stony Battery Road is uh, coming. The plan and reviews are coming to fruition. That will be going before the Planning Commission at their December ninth meeting, and then um, we'll follow up coming to the board at the second meeting in January. Staff has received a time extension from uh, the developer for the 3072 Knoll Road cluster development. That extension extends the board's requirement for 90 day action until February of 2021. I'm happy to report that we had a pleasant meeting with Mr. McCollum from Dutch Valley Auto Works back on um, October 16th. And uh, it was relayed to him that the township would be open to rescinding the withdrawal that he had previously submitted. Uh, I'm also happy to report that I just received the letter from his engineer requesting that rescission of the withdrawal. And that will be coming before the board at the December 2nd board meeting. Um, there was an issue of concern with one of the residents that lives on Brant Road, which is a private road off of Church Street they were concerned about some of the residents from the uh, stone fence, now known as Hampton Heath development, walking their dogs along that road. And I did explain to them that that is a private road and the, as part of the development, the township was able to negotiate and obtain an emergency access only for Brant Road. So I, was, I did confirm for the resident that this is a shared access, basically a shared access driveway for any of the residents that live off of Brant Road and it is not public for any of the residents for Stone Fence or Hampton Heath to use. But it was one of those things where I just wanna make the board aware that there are still there is still some contention with the residents that are living on Brant Road because of the development of the Stone Fence project. And uh, the Stone Gate, Condominiums stormwater project has begun construction. So hopefully that will be completed in the spring of 21. I'd also like to uh, add a God notification, or I should say um, we were able to uh, come to a resolution with the developer for the last remaining piece of the running pump road subdivision project, which uh, received approval from the board back in 2009. We've issued a building permit and um, we'll be uh, 
staff, staff and the engineer are working on a financial security reduction for that project. That will be coming before the board at the December 2nd meeting. Um, so that's uh, a long a project that has been on the, on the books for a while and it's finally coming to fruition and gonna come off the township uh, rolls. And that, that concludes my report. Okay, any questions, Mr. Beck? Well done. We actually have a lot of things to talk about in the manager's um, group report, so we will turn it over to Ms. Schweitzer. So you got a copy of my report. I do have some things I wanted to add, uh, like Mr. Russell alluded to, a little kind of stuck a Greenway project. Currently, Manheim Township is not willing to provide any financial support for the project. The township, just for the, the audience, has at this point agreed to put in their budget 75,000 towards that project for design and engineering. Lancaster City is fully on board, willing to support the project and provide the 75,000 that's been requested. Lancaster Township has backed up a little bit. They are interested in doing a project with a piece of the Steinman land and doing their own restoration project in exchange for the design fee, design engineering fee that we had asked for the ML in the MLU, that we didn't, but uh, Simon has asked for the MLU. So they are still involved in the project, but it looks different. And I'm getting further clarification from Mr. Schultz on that because he's meeting with them, I believe today or tomorrow. So that's kind of in a little uneven keel. So as Mr. Russell indicated, it should go back to the planning commission and reevaluate the township's position on the whole project. Was there a reason given that Manning Township pulled out? Um, they have uh, a deficit for their 2021 budget. They didn't feel that they wanted to expend 75,000 towards the project. So that's that one. Going back to the group, um, the golf uh, HVAC project. We had hoped that that would get done this year. It's actually going to be uh, completed next year. So you're gonna see that funding uh, transferred over to next year's budget. And we're probably looking at a higher cost than 135, but uh, we won't know that until we actually put it out for bid. Regarding COVID, my report says that everyone is doing well, uh, families included but we have experienced a couple of close calls with employees and their families. Uh, no one has contracted COVID at this point, but we've had some close calls. Staff has had a meeting to review our protocols that we had in place so that we're prepared to take a next step should we need to do that. Uh, Hemfield Area Fire Service Commission, uh, not exactly my report, but we uh, had a meeting last night. We had 22 applicants apply for the uh, fire services chief fire official. Of those 22 applicants, four are qualified and will go through the review and interview process. Probably in the end of uh, November, beginning of December, with the hopes of having him hired by December 31st of next year. Um, Centerville Road. Good news, we received $556,000 from PennDOT, which represents the 80% of monies that we had fronted for the project until we had the, the agreement of, of in place that's currently under for 8020. So that's good news. Mr. Robinson is very happy. Uh, the Aher Foundation roof. I just got an update from that. They had a contractor that uh, had a low bid for a slate replacement roof. That contractor has not, they have not been able to contact him. He's kind of MIA. So the thought process of the foundation is that his quote was very low. He's probably not interested in doing the project. So they are gonna go back after some more quotes. They are now looking at a synth synthetic slate or possibly a shingles roof that looks like slate. So they've kind of downgraded and backed up their expectations. So more to follow on that as they move along in their process. Uh, Enfield Area Recreation Commission. We donated them two trucks this year, one of our, some of our old trucks. They also had a truck that they sold. They sold that for $1,000. 
The question from Mr. Book is, do we want a reimbursement of that money back to the township since it was our truck? Or do you just want to allow them to keep it? I'm fine with them keeping it. And we can send it back to admin finance and have a discussion on it. Yeah, let's There's no see, urgency let's to it. Back to yeah. And the sign and conditional use quote, which was raised at the last meeting, I had made a promise that you would have that this meeting. You do not have it. Um, DMA needs to get some further clarification on the direction that the board would like to move towards in terms of the sign ordinance in particular. So what is being suggested is that that goes back to the planning group for further discussion and provide the clarity that uh, Mr. Hain needs to complete this quote. And that's all I have to add. Well, we did have a uh, pension board meeting today. Um, and Six months ago, we gave you uh, some really bad news uh, because we were using the 2018 numbers. Now we got the 2019 numbers in there. And uh, the first nine months of 2020, which surprisingly actually aren't all that bad. And we went from our police being 71.5% funded, 82% funded, and our non-uniform went from 85% funded to 104% funded. Our net increase between both funds has gotten us up to 88.4% when you combine both pensions. Um, that is at the very top of what's called level one, which is slightly distressed. And if we can add another 1.6%, we will no longer be distressed at all with our pension, which would be the, probably the first time in 20 years. Uh, so over the last 10 years, we have basically increased our percent funding with the extra $200,000 a year we've been putting in for the last five years as resulted in us going from roughly 70% to roughly 80%, about 10% increase. Um, we will have a little bit more options as we go into the budget season next year. Uh, we can do it in between um, update on our MMO obligations. Um, and that could give us a little bit more flexibility with our 2022, but we're still on the hook for our MMO obligations for 2021 that's in the budget. Uh, but it will give us the potential for some relief if we choose to do this. It also give us the potential we choose to increase monies into it. We would have that option too. So we just have a lot more options with our next year's budget than what we have with this year's budget. Uh, Mr. Ben, did you got anything else? The only other thing I'd add is that uh, it appears that all our investments are performing well and above the benchmarks that have been established for uh, for us. Uh, so uh, uh, we've got just an all around you know solid performance. Looking ahead, at least for the next couple of months, uh, we think we're going to be in very good shape at the end of uh, 2020 uh, moving forward. Another thing for the board to consider, and I would like to actually formally talk about this at our next meeting, it's not on agenda for tonight, um, about whether we get a little bit more aggressive with our OPEB funding of our, our uh, basically our fund that we have put in place for our post-retirement health care benefits that we have not tapped in over 15 years. So we have not touched it in this ever since it's been created. It's now sitting at two and a half million dollars it's making roughly about 4% a year. So it's just making a little smidge above inflation. Um, and do we want to diversify our investments more and run it more like our pension program to get a higher rate of return? Then that's a fund that we have demonstrated we don't need to use right now. And it's a fund that for the next four years we're budgeting that we will not touch either. Uh, so it'd be an opportunity for us to grow it at a faster rate. Um, over the last, when we talk the next, in December's meeting, I go over what the last 10 years have represented with revenue and expenses for the township. We have obviously, uh, when we changed the township's philosophy and went from no growth to um, development and being more business friendly, 
um, we got a lot more revenue in. Well, we're getting to tail end of that where we are now much more still up at this point. And that revenue boom that we had over the last 10 years is not necessarily what's going to be reflected 10 years from now or 15 years from now. So it'd be nice for us to grow this fund at a little bit higher rate, keep a long game view point of it. And someday another board of supervisors that will need monies for capital funding of projects that does not have the same ability to get the funds that we currently have, they will have a, a source of funds that we can pass on to the next generation. Uh, so I just want everybody to think about that. We would have to make some recommendations um, to our pension advisors, um, just generalized recommendations and they can put a game plan together for us to actually formally adopt probably at the beginning of the year. Uh, so it's just some food for thought. We've been sitting on that for a while. Uh, the police appear to be okay, although we would certainly need their buy-in. So technically that is a fund that's dedicated for them, but since we've consistently been putting the money into the pension program, they, the police have greatly appreciated that. So the, there's a lot of goodwill on that end right now that you know that we, we've been honoring our commitments to the uh, post-retirement health care that we got to provide the officers and at the same time we've been increasing our funding on the uh, pension. So was, I think it's going to be pretty positively received by the police. So that's, that's the pension. Is there any other board reports? Okay. I do have one more thing. This is not on the agenda. Um, but I was thinking about this today as I was looking at ways to raise additional revenue. We have right now with the Colebrook Bridge removal, we have Amtrak owing us roughly about $200,000 by court order where they had just ignored us and basically thumbed the nose at following the court order. Up to this point, with the Holland Street removal and everything, we needed Amtrak's goodwill. We don't anymore. <laughs> I think it's now, it's now time for us to uh, exert our muscle and get the monies that we've been court ordered to receive from Amtrak that all the other parties paid to. We did our part, PennDOT did their part, Norfolk Southern did their part. By court order, Amtrak was also supposed to contribute and they did not. They decide that they're Amtrak and they can ignore the laws in any suits and any findings of the judges. Um, what I would think would be a good approach is right now we owe them $20,000 for the Holland Street Bridge inspection reports. And I think we could possibly send them a bill and subtract out the $20,000 that we owe them and send them a bill for the remainder amount of money that they owe us. <laughs> Just to get an open dialogue, because right now it's like talking to a black hole until you get their attention. You doing that before or after Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just throwing that out there as an idea. I can't say it's been too much, but I'm not sure the exact numbers are. I think it's a little bit less than 200,000. Can our solicitor review that proposal? Well, it's, we're having a little bit of a discussion today. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time where somebody owes somebody else and you subtract that what you owe. And in this case, they kind of owe us a credit. Well, I mean, I'm all for it. I'm in favor of it. I just, I don't want to create. No, I'm just throwing that, throwing that idea out there. If we look at the way to raise revenues, well, one way to raise revenues is to get people to pay their bills. Do you need a motion to do that? I don't think that would be appropriate tonight. I, if, if we need to get a general some consensus. That's, yeah, I think we got, we got, it's, staff has not had a chance to even look at this and know about the ramifications, obviously our solicitor will need to weigh in. She's, I'm sure excited to take on another legal matter for the township that would involve the courts. <laughs> um, but I do think it's kind of, it's, it is really poor behavior on Amtrak's part when all the other parties have paid their part for this and they've decided that they simply because they're a federal agency, they don't need to listen to a court order at this point that's been rendered. Uh, so I would just throw that out as a, Way to make up some budget shortfalls, and that could be a, another 150000 or so into our budget, maybe many years down the road. I, I will pull the, the Amtrak check that was in your, your list tonight, and that had to do with the planning stages of the Holland Street. So there will be more invoices coming for the actual work that they did when, during the removal. So I'd be glad to continue giving them more credits for those bills. <laughs> hear you. So if everybody, the board's okay with that general concept, we can let staff come back and make some recommendations mm -hmm. um, at a future meeting. Yep. Absolutely. 
Yeah, do it. So that, anything else from the manager's report? Okay, we'll now open up to public comment. We have two people in the audience. I don't see anybody on Zoom, it looks like. Is there anybody here for public comment? Okay, just make it simple. Is there anything out of the board at this point for the good of the order? Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> if I could just make a comment for the good of the order. Um, I believe that it would be uh, I would be remiss if I did not provide kudos to our school district administration and leadership. I was on yet another COVID planning call with them today. Um, for the first three months of school with a population of greater than 7,000 in the school district, we remain at less than one half of 1% for COVID cases across the district. The total number in the first three months of school, including people who have reported to the school but are not consistently working in the school buildings is only 37 cases. And as we continue into a time where we're seeing other districts uh, make perhaps some knee jerk reactions, our school district continues to use statistical data analysis and subject matter experts to make sound decisions. And I believe that um, we as staff and also as residents benefit significantly from that. I would, I would concur with that, having a wife that works in the school district. I think they're doing a very good job and three of my kids are still there, so. And I, so I, would, I would completely agree with you. I've listened to what some of my coworkers are having to deal with their kids at schools right now. Hemphill's got their act together. Is there a possibility we could do some kind of resolution to support for, for what they're doing in the schools? I, I think you're doing a great job. This the superintendent is. I think it went hurt. I do see some of the noise on next door related to the school district. Um, some of the more conspiracy theorists that think the school district is just hiding numbers and having sick kids report and not reporting them. And I don't. I've told people when that when someone brought that up to me this week in a scouting event, I told them that was false. That this Mr. Bobarski is probably the best superintendent I've ever worked with. Um, and I've worked with a lot of superintendents at a lot of different school districts, and he is head and shoulders above everybody else. And his personal attention to this and where he personally is involved with every context tracing um, is the reason why Hempfield has been able to navigate this and other schools have basically faltered. Um, so leadership stops, starts at the top, and he's, he's been as a captain of the ship and doing a very good job. Um, I would encourage the board, that's the will. We might be able to have our staff have a resolution for our next meeting since we're only two weeks out of support. I think that would um, be a good thing for us actually to show our support for the school district because they are coming under pressure by certain people that are ill-informed and don't understand HIPAA laws that you can't go into specific detail of specific cases. You therefore think, well, because we're able to stay open, we must be falsely reporting because uh, we have to be just like every other school district that is struggling. So is that, is that kind of a nod of the heads with everybody? Yes. So it's going to be put something together for circuit way around the board for us to uh, make suggestions on and we'll take action at the next meeting and discuss it publicly. Okay, anything else for the good of the order? I see none. It is 8.10. We are going to adjourn the meeting. We are going to go into executive session. We are not going to deliberate or take action, and we will not return.